It's week 17, and it's the end of the regular season. On to the playoffs. Oh, oh boy. What is up, everybody? JT Dangerously here once again. I am back for my week 17 NFL predictions. Now, of course, week 16 just ended with the Dallas Cowboys beating the Detroit Lions on Monday Night Football tonight. So my record finishing up this week, week 16, is 11-5. and five. So it's a winning week. Better than last week. That is, I would say not as great as last week, but it's better than nothing. Five losses. Five losses from teams that should have won. Should uh, should have won. That's that is for sure. They should have won, but of course they lost, and I got to take those L's. So five L's is not too bad this season. Eleven straight weeks. And we're going to finish it up with week 17 for sure. We're at 11. Let's finish the regular season with. Tw Let's finish the regular season and go for 12, and then on to the playoff picks. But now, again, before I start, I want to thank everybody who did watch my Week 16 picks, and also my the newest thing to the channel, the Fave Five, which is um, one of my good friends, my good loyal, uh, my good friend for years. My man Mitchell Seagull gave me that idea of uh, the Fave Five list, the top five performers of the week, which. I will be doing on Monday for sure, so keep uh, keep an eye out on that for sure. Um, I want to thank everybody who did watch it. Over 350 plus views on it. What can I say, you guys? Um, you guys are awesome. And sorry about the quality of it because um, I recorded um, the battery was running out on my tablet, so I had to do it in a different locator where it, where it was an outlet. So again, if that was a weird place to see me uh, do a predictions video, I'm sorry. It happens. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Again, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank every, um, you guys hit that like button. 12 likes, fantastic. You guys keeping up the good work on the likes. 43, 40, everything 40, or maybe 40 plus comments from fantastic commenters representing their teams, representing who they got winning this week. We're at 93 subscribers. We're getting so close to 100. And, of course, week 17 is the, it's, it's on Sunday, which is the first Game, uh, the, the last game of this season and the and the last and going right into the playoffs. And again, I will be doing my playoff. I will be doing my wild card predictions, divisional, championship, and of course Super Bowl predictions on this channel. So stay tuned for that. Um, I hope everybody had a happy and a very merry Christmas. No, uh, what do you call it? There was a there. Did, uh, this week's week 16 had a Christmas miracle and two Christmas tragedies, and I will get to those teams in a minute. But once again, I hope everybody had a happy and a very merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa to, to, to those who celebrated. And of course, we're going into the new year. Let's start off 2017 on a high note for sure. Um, before I start, I want to like a few commenters saying that why don't you do a spread count like the spread picks. Coming from me, I'm not a good picker of scoring. I'm not a I'm not a mind reader. I I think I've said that a lot on the comments. Again, I just do straight picks. I don't do spread. I don't make. I don't predict scores. That's not my type. Of, that's not my type because I'm not good at it. So again, if you, um, um, that's how I am. Can't change who I am. I'm a guy who just does straight picks. So if you wanna if you wanna argue, argue with this guy right here. This argue with my man Vegeta in the background. But let's get right into these Week 17 picks. Of course, um, there is uh, there is no Monday night games. These are all Sunday games. And, of course, the uh, Sunday night game, which was uh, announced uh, on, sun on Sunday for um, Christmas. So let's get right into these picks, starting with the first matchup in the NFC South. The New Orleans Saints heading to the Georgia Dome to play the Dirty Birds, Atlanta Falcons. Uh, both teams are coming off uh, wins. Atlanta beating Carolina, New Orleans beating Tampa. So both teams are coming off big time wins. But of course, New Orleans is out of the playoffs. Atlanta is the number two seed in the, N in the F NFC playoffs. So they're looking to get the first round bye for this uh, for the playoffs, starting in the in the in the NFC playoff division. They're looking for the bye. Of course, Julio Jones came back for Atlanta. Big time help. Devontae Freeman, Devin Coleman had a great game. Taylor, Ga uh, their fantastic wide receiver, uh, Taylor Gabriel, I think if that's his real, if that's his name, Falcons fans, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. He's a fantastic wide receiver. Matt Ryan looked good. Chris good, and of course the Saints looked good. Of course Drew Brees had a great game. Um, Mar Marvin Ingram had a great game. Mark Ingram had a fantastic game for the Saints. Big time win against the Buccaneers, which. 
I had to pick the I had to pick the Saints in that game, of course. Okay, now so in this matchup, I am gonna go with the Atlanta Falcons at home. They're gonna need that first round bye. They want to be the threat, but of course, if they lose and Seattle beats San Francisco, that kind of that we could have a we could have Seattle at two, Atlanta at three, or it's gonna stay at Atlanta at two or Seattle at three. So once again, I am taking the Atlanta Falcons to beat the New Orleans Saints. Now the next matchup in the NFC in the AFC North, the Baltimore Ravens heading to Cincinnati to play the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, of course, both teams are coming off losses. Baltimore lost on Christmas on Sunday to the Pittsburgh Steelers, so they have math they are officially eliminated from the playoffs. And then you have the Cincinnati Bengals who did lose to Houston, and they're of, of course also out of com uh, playoff competition. Baltimore did look good in that game on Sunday on Christmas for sure, but. It was not their best game. It was like three Bs were out there. Three Bs got it done. What can I say? Then you have the Cincinnati Bengals who lost an ugly game, snores fest, if you will, against Houston. And I'll get to Houston in a minute. It was not a big time game. Of course, AJ Green did not play. He wanted to play, but the team did not want him to get hurt anymore or get or hopefully not get hurt again. So they chose to not play him. He could play this week or he could not play this week. It wouldn't really matter coming from me. So coming from me in this matchup, I am going to take the Baltimore Ravens to beat the Cincinnati Bengals. Now the next matchup in the AFC South Division. The Houston Texans heading to Nashville to play the Tennessee Titans. Now, of course, the Houston Texans did win. They are the AFC South champions. They did it without Brock Osweiler. And who won it for them? He didn't have to do anything but get it done, and that's Tom Savage. Because, let's just say it right now, Brock Osweiler is the biggest free agent bust sign of the season. He bitched about, he bitched at Denver, they traded him, and now he's the be he, he got benched again. Brock Osweiler is not a clutch quarterback. I, I, saw, I saw a commenter saying he is a great quarterback. Brock Osweiler has 14 touchdowns, 16 picks this season. He's a, he's your he he's you put seven years into this guy and he gives you 16 picks in the, this season. He's not a he's not a starting quarterback. And of course, Tom Savage did okay. It was mostly their defense that got it done. Alfred Blue got it done. He didn't have to even score a touchdown and they got it done with Tom Savage. A little, they had a, there was more click there with. There was more clicking there with Tom Savage than Brock Osweiler. So, again, that was a big win for Houston. Then you have the Tennessee Titans who did lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars but lost Marcus Mariota for the season. Bro, uh, it was a, what is it, a, a fractured fibula. He's done for the season. That was the, like, out of the, this one was a big one, but the one when we get to the the other guy who got injured on Sunday on Saturday, it's gonna hit hard. But this one was big because they were at the cusp of at the cusp of getting the AFC South. But Mariota breaks his leg, and now they're gonna go with Matt Castle. It's Matt Castle against um, Tom Savage. I mean, Matt Castle does have experience. Coming, of course, being a Patriots fan, I, we know how Matt Castle did when uh, Tom Brady was out for the season that one year. Matt Castle's a good quarterback. That's no doubt. But he's not in the caliber of Marcus Mariota. And that, and that coming from me, I have to take the Houston Texans to beat the Tennessee Titans in this matchup. Just because uh, Castle is no Mariota. But he's a good quarterback, but he's not Mariota. Like, good. So I'm taking Houston over Tennessee. Now the next matchup, the Jacksonville Jaguars heading to Lucas Oil Stadium to play the Indianapolis Colts. Now, of course, the Jacksonville Jaguars got a big-time win against Tennessee. Offense woke up after weeks of blowing leads, uh, 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 screwing up in the end. They got it done. Blake Bortles looked great. That is for sure. Then you have the Indianapolis Colts who did lose to the Oakland Raiders. Uh, officially eliminating them from the playoffs. Both teams are off. Both teams are out of the playoffs, of course. Um, Andrew Luck had a good game. T.Y. Owen had a good game. But, of course, they played against the Oakland Raiders. And, that, and playing again, like I said, playing at the Black Hole is a different monster. That is for sure. So coming from me in this matchup, I am going to take the Indianapolis Colts to win. Please, let's, let's end this regular season without a Colts uh, blunder. 
when I pick them. So I'm taking the Colts to beat the Jaguars. But I wouldn't be surprised Jacksonville wins, but I'm going to take the Colts over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now the next matchup in the AFC East. The, of course, my New England Patriots heading to Miami to play the Miami Dolphins. The Fins, of course. Of course, Tom Brady had a great game against the Jets. Well, anybody can beat the Jets. The Jets are terrible. They're a terrible team. Ter like, terrible offense, terrible defense, everything. Scored only three of, uh, well... What's what was the uh, forty-one to three over the Jets? I mean, come on. Brady had a great game, threw the different weapons. That was great, which looks good in his MVP candidacy. Then you have the Miami Dolphins, who like that game on Saturday had me more stressed than any game on Christmas Eve against the Bills. I thought they were going to lose it, and then Matt Moore brought them back, won the game in overtime. Jay Ajayi over 200 yards on the ground, another 200-yard game against the Bills. I mean, if he did it once, what, what makes you think he wouldn't do it again? I mean, Miami, of course, with Denver losing on Sunday, officially are in the playoffs, and I'm so happy for the fans. They definitely deserve it. I would say the coach for the Dolphins would be up there for coach of the year, of course, uh, if it isn't um, Jack Del Rio, he, uh, Gaines would be definitely the coach of the year for the Finns. Of course, there's a lot of uh, Miami Dolphin fans on my comment section, so of course, Finns up. But when it comes to them playing my team, I have to go with my team. So coming from me in this matchup, I am going to take my New England Patriots to beat the Miami Dolphins. Nothing personal, Dolphins fans. This is just a. This is just a. This is not personal, it's just business. I gotta stick with my team, I gotta stick with the Patriots in this one. So I'm taking the Patriots over the Dolphins. Now the next matchup in the NFC North. The Chicago Bears heading to Minnesota to play the Minnesota Vikings. Now of course both teams are coming, um, are coming off losses. Chicago to Washington, Minnesota to Green Bay. Both teams are eliminated from the playoffs. We can now say Minnesota was the bus team in the NFC North after starting 5-0. Went uh, and now completely out of the playoffs. And both teams, of course, Sam Bradford um, looked good against Green Bay. Stephon Dix had a touchdown. The running game, again, there was no Adrian Peterson. I think they're going to just shut him down for the season. So, of course, Adrian Peterson won't be playing for him. Then you have the Chicago Bears who look good. Matt Barkley's looking like the man in, in Chi Town. That is for sure. He looks like the man in Chi Town. That is for sure. Matt Barkley had a good game. He didn't have his greatest game, but he had a good game. He kept it. He kept it like he 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 got close. But again, it's the Redskins. It's Kirk Cousins. It's, it's different. So coming from me in this matchup again, this is kind of a throwaway matchup. But I again, all the most of these games that teams are already eliminated, I have to pick them because it's, it's what I do. So coming from me, I'm going to take the Minnesota Vikings to win. I know they're very suspect, but. I, I mean, I can't go with the Bears on this one. I gotta go with the. I gotta go with the. I gotta go with a veteran quarterback like Sam Bradford. So I'm taking Minnesota to beat Chicago. Now the next matchup in the AFC East: the the Buffalo Bills heading to Jersey to play the New York Jets. Now, of course, the both teams are coming off losses: Buffalo to Miami in overtime, Jets getting just completely manhandled by Patriots. I mean, Buffalo did look good. I mean, Tyrod Taylor had a great game. You never know. He may be on my Fave Fives list uh, this week. He looked good. Charles Clay had a great game. Two touchdowns for the tight end. They looked good, but of course they lost. Rex Ryan can't get it done. He's not a winning quarterback. He's not a winning coach. He's a 500 coach. He'll always get, he'll always be 8-8 eight and, eight and never go farther than that and honestly they fire him it'd be the best thing because they need somebody new rex ryan again like i said in my week 16 his mouth is overriding his ass his mouth is overriding his i mean his um his mouth is overriding a check that he can't cash and he hasn't cashed yet in buffalo they haven't had a win they they're not in the playoffs what can you say they're not in the playoffs again and they look like they can go eight and eight this season again Rex Ryan, fat ass Ryan brothers, get rid of him. Get rid of super, the get the super get 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 rid of the not so super Ryan brothers. They are a nuisance. They're good as offensive or defensive. They're not good coaches. Let's just say that straight up. Then you have the New York Jets who did lose. 
Well, that's not a surprise there. That's not a surprise. This one is kind of a, another match I care little about, but again, it is a game. So, coming from me, I am going to take the Buffalo Bills to beat the New York Jets in this matchup. Now the next matchup, the Dallas Cowboys heading to Philly to play the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, of course, the Dallas Cowboys did win on Monday Night Football on Monday. Big time win. Continue the, str continue the reign as the number one seed. Home field advantage throughout the NFC. What can you say more? Dak had a great game. Zeke had a great game. That's the Cowboys for you. Then you have the Philadelphia Eagles who did beat the New York Giants on Thursday Night Football. Last Thursday Night game. That was all my fourth loss. My my fourth loss on Thursday Night Football. So thank you, Giants. You done goofed. You done goofed. Of course, Philly did look good. Carson Wentz had a great game. Uh, they won't have uh, Ryan Matthews. I did hear that he's going to be. He's not going to play. He's out for the season. So running is going to be in the trouble. But they do have Darren Sproles. They do have other talents around them to run the ball. So coming from me in this matchup, and I, again, I wouldn't even be surprised they rest. Dak just to put Romo in for the hell of it. Hey, they're already in the number one seed one. They already have home field advantage in the NFC two. You know what? If Dak has a bad game this week, just put Romo in. If he if he wants to play, let him play. And again, I'm no Romo fan. Just play him. If if they're down 28 to nothing to Philly, put Romo in. It doesn't matter. They're not like, but coming for me in this matchup, I am gonna take the them Cowboys. You gotta go with the boys. This is going to, like, when we get to the playoffs, then it's going to be a completely different monster because you got rookies coming, going into the, going into the playoffs as, like, as greenhorns. They're, some of the players, they, they have been there, Witten and Dez, and so it's going to have a little bit of a confidence, but let's, let's hope it's not overconfident. So I'm taking the Dallas Cowboys to beat the Eagles. Now the next matchup in the NFC North, the, the now non-winless Cleveland Browns heading to Hinesville to play the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, yes, that was a Christmas miracle. The Cleveland Browns beat the San Diego Chargers, their first win of the season. And if you know what I've said, whoever loses to Cleveland and has them has them end at the losing the the bid for 0-16, they're gonna be on a certain Oh, I don't know, list, but I'll get to that in a minute. But Cleveland did look good. I would think RG3 had a concussion, but again, they got it done. Their defense got it done for them. I was like, it was a Christmas miracle. But what can you expect in the NFL on Christmas Eve that we get a miracle like that for Cleveland? So congratulations, Cleveland Browns. You ain't going winless, and you just need to get the number one draft pick, and you'll be looking for... Somebody, for sure. But congratulations, Cleveland Browns and Cleveland Browns fans for that one win. Even if it's just that one. Congratulations. And then you have the Pittsburgh Steelers who did beat the Baltimore Ravens in a slugfest on Christmas to win the AFC North. Fantastic game. The three Bs were out. Of course, Ben Roethlisberger did not have. He had two picks, but he got it done in the clutch as usual. And coming from me in the AFC he is the one, like, out of every team in the AFC, Smith, uh, uh, Smith, um, uh, Alex Smith, uh, Ben Roethlisberger, um, Tom Savage, like, Ben Roethlisberger is a legit threat to the Patriots in the AFC playoffs. That is for sure. Like, I wouldn't even be surprised it's going to be Patriots- uh, Steelers in the AFC Championship. That's maybe my bold prediction, but I can see that happening because experience is going to go a long way in the AFC playoffs because you have Brady, you have Ben, and then you have you have Alex Smith, another veteran. But the rest of the the rest of the field is very young, making their first starts, making their first playoff starts. So it's very it's a very experience based playoff in the AFC for sure. So coming from me in this matchup, I am going to take the Pittsburgh Steelers because like, it would be another, it would be a New Year's miracle. It would be a New Year's miracle if Cleveland wins a second game and of course beats the AFC South, uh, AFC North champion Steelers. But coming from me, I am going to stick with the Steelers to beat the Browns. 
Now the next matchup in the AFC, in the NFC South, the Carolina Panthers heading to Florida to play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, of course, both teams are coming off losses, Carolina to Atlanta, Tampa Bay to New Orleans. Now, of course, Carolina's out. I mean, this season has been very, very bad for Carolina, and I know Carolina fans, there's got to be some Panthers fans out there that are saying this is definitely their worst year after being in the Super Bowl last year to not making the playoffs this year. So it's been a big-time disappointment. They have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who did lose to Tampa Bay, but they're still mathematically still in the hunt in the in for the wild card. So keep an eye on that. And I know there's a certain Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan who is just hoping they can get into the playoffs. And again, me too. Here's hoping, fingers crossed, they can get in. But if they don't get in, there'll be a threat in the a in the NFC South for sure every year because what they had Jameis Winston, Mike Evans. Of course, Dougie Martin did not play. They healthy scratched them, which was kind of sketchy but again it was done it was done so i couldn't say anything but but in this matchup just to finish up just to finish up the season for tampa bay i'm gonna have them winning this match i got so i got tampa bay to beat carolina now the next matchup in the nfc east the new york giants heading to land over to play the washington redskins now of course the new york giants did um did lose to the philadelphia eagles on thursday night football i don't know what happened Three picks, Eli. Really? Three picks? You're lucky you didn't make the list. But there was there was two other ones that deserved it more than you. But Eli, wake the fuck up. Uh, they did not look good on Thursday night. They could have won that game, but they didn't. They have the Washington Redskins, who did get it done uh, against Chicago. Uh, Kurt Cousins had a great game. Deshaun Jackson had another great game. They, used, they run the ball. They ran the ball more. They didn't have to go for the home run. They went for like a couple singles, couple, couple single, couple single running rushing plays, and that's kind of makes your team a lot better. But coming for me in this matchup, I think the Giants are due for a rebound on the road. So I'm going to take the New York Giants to beat the Washington Redskins. Now the next matchup in the AFC West, the Oakland Raiders heading two mile high to play the Denver Broncos. Now of course the Oakland Raiders did win, but they paid the price they lost their main man Derek Carr they lost Derek Carr for the season broken fibula out indefinitely let's just say it, he's out for the season like when I heard he broke his leg I'm not even I'm like I believe in like again Mitch my man Mitchell told me about the Raiders I like I've jumped I've jumped on that high train but when I heard he hurt I have never been like so dejected and felt so bad for Raider fans for this to happen to them. I mean, this was just a the saddest. I mean, now they got to go with Matt McGloin, career record 1 and 5 going into the playoffs. They lose their quarterback a week before the play like 2 weeks before the playoffs start. And like you could have saw me. I was just like, oh, you just cannot do this to this team. You just can't. This team has waited this long for a playoff run. And then they lose their quarterback for the year. Derek Carr, like, that's a huge blow. That was maybe the, that was the, that was the biggest blow for the Raiders this season. Like, any season, this is the biggest blow. And they needed him, and now they got to go with Matt McGloin. Of course, I remember him at Penn State. He's a great quarterback, but you're filling big holes. I'm sorry. And your record, one in five career starts, and you're going into the playoffs. And, of course, with Kansas City winning, they have to win this game against Denver to, and hopefully have KC lose to win the division. But with a rook, with a backup against Denver's no-fly zone off, no-fly zone defense, but, of course, it's not going to be easy for Oakland Raiders fans. And I felt so bad. And it, it just felt so just dejected. I just felt so depressed. And that's like, as a football fan, it just felt like the heart was ripped out. And I know you Raider fans can, can definitely relate. Losing, a, uh, losing him uh, on, on Saturday, huge, huge loss. Then you have the Denver Broncos who did lose to the, to the Kansas City Chiefs and which – uh, uh, eliminated him from the playoffs and also clinched the playoff berth for the Miami Dolphins. So again, fins up and congratulations for 
making the playoffs, Dolphin fan, uh, uh, Miami Dolphins, Finns, straight up. Denver did not look good. Trevor Simeon had a terrible game. Not his best game. It was, of course, it was raining in Arrowhead. It was not his best game. It was not, it was just not his best game. So coming from me, now I hate to do this, and I never picked against the Raiders this season. I, I think I picked against Raiders a few times, but in this matchup, I am going to go with the Denver Broncos. I am sorry, Raider fans, but one in five, one in five from McGloin is going to go to mile high against, at Denver. That crowd's going to be loud, and it's, he has weapons, but it's, it's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be easy. They're gonna be lucky to make it through the first round or divisional. So coming from me, I am gonna take the Denver Broncos to beat the Oakland Raiders. Now the next matchup in the NFC West: the Arizona Cardinals heading to the to the Coliseum to play the LA Rams. Now, of course, the Arizona Cardinals miraculously won against Seattle, and I will get to Seattle in a minute. Um, they got it done. This could be Larry Fitzgerald's last game. In the NFL, so again, what a great career Larry Fitzgerald's had. Uh, mad props to you, and we'll see you in the Hall of Fame, hopefully. Then you have the LA Rams, who did lose to the 49ers. I mean, they couldn't even beat the 49ers. How the, how the hell does that happen? I mean, they had a great game, and then they just blew it. And it's like, just... And again, that was one of my losses, and it was like that was a game I should have won. But again, I mean, I'm not perfect. I couldn't win that game if I if I prayed on it. So coming for me in this matchup, I am going to take the Arizona Cardinals to beat the LA Rams, just to let Larry Fitzgerald ride off to the sunset, like they usually do with guys retiring in the season. Let them ride off to the sunset. Peyton Manning, Tony La Russa, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a lot of other players are running off to the sunset in the regular season. Right, let's just see how Larry Fitzgerald win. Ride him off to the sunset. So I'm taking the Arizona Cardinals to beat the LA Rams. Now, for this could be for the AFC West champion uh, division. The Kansas City Chiefs heading to San Diego to play the San Diego Chargers. Now, of course, the Kansas City Chiefs got a big time win on Christmas against Denver. Big, huge, biggest game they needed. They definitely, they definitely needed that win for them. Now, with just an Oakland loss, Kansas City would be in the playoffs. And coming from me, I think Kansas City is dangerous. Like, dangerous. Dangerous team, defense, offense. I mean, Tyreek Hill had a great game. Travis Kelsey had a monster game at tight end. Alex Smith was doing running plays. He was running. He His whole, like, they had, I think they had, like, at least two or three different players that had more rushing yards than the whole Denver running game. Which is saying a lot. And that's a big time win. And then you have the San Diego Chargers. Who lost to the Cleveland Browns. And you know what that means. You know what happens when you screw. When you lose to a, a winless team. And you could have won that game. You just made the list. Exactly. You just made my list. I mean. Like I said. You blew it. You could have kept them from going 0-16. And you lost. San Diego. Like I said. You just made my list, as you just heard. You just made you just made the list. I mean, and you already know what that happens. You know what happens. I pick against you. So I'm taking the Kansas City Chiefs to win this game and hopefully win the AFC West. No offense to Oakland, but Kansas City looks like the most dangerous team to play in, in the AFC. That is for sure. So I'm taking Kansas City to beat San Diego. Now the... Next matchup, the in the in the NFC West, the San, the Seattle Seahawks heading to Santa Clara to play the San Francisco 49ers. Now, of course, Seattle Seahawks lost, and it's a familiar face that cost us. Stephen Hauschka, the Hauschka, if you will. We come all the way back. They come all the way back, and they tie the game. All you had to do was make the field goal. And what do you do? You miss it. Hauschka, this is the, like, what can I say? You know what happens when you make, you should be making these field goals and you you keep missing them and that costs us two wins against Arizona? You know what happens? You just made the list. Really? Yeah, of course. You're going to make the list. Just the kicker, not the team. Steven Hauschka, 
you literally, this has been his worst season kicking. He's missed field goals he should be making every damn day. And he's missing them. I mean, how, and then they, they're and now Seattle's at the number four position because of that. I mean, they, they lost the first round bye, so they're going to have to play on wild card weekend, it looks like. If something doesn't happen, they're going to be playing on wild card weekend on, on that Saturday. And then you have the San Francisco 49ers who did get a win. Two wins. Now there are only two. I mean, they're two and 13. I mean, and of course, I uh, did hear Carlos Hyde is uh, tore his MCL, so he's not. He's going to be done for the season, so they have no running game. Um, and they only have Colin Kaepernick. I mean, come on. It's Chip Kelly against Pete Carroll. It's USC against Oregon. It's a Pac-12 matchup, and and it's looking like, and I'm, of course, I'm going to take the Seattle Seahawks to win this game. Seattle will win this game easy. Seattle to beat San Francisco. Now the Sunday night matchup. Yes, they, they had a Sunday night matchup announced, and it's for, of course, the NFC North title. The Detroit Lions, I mean, the Green Bay Packers heading to Ford Field to play the Detroit Lions. Now, of course, Green Bay is coming off a big-time win. They're, they're running the table, as Aaron Rodgers would say. Then you have the Detroit Lions, who did lose on Monday Night Football, which was a big loss. And now this division is up for grabs. I mean, I mean this Aaron Rodgers had a great game. Five touch, I think it was four touchdowns, or I think five, four or five touchdowns in that game. I mean, they are another dangerous team. And Detroit's losing to Monday, and now they have to play on Sunday, and now they're going to have to bow down. To, they're going to bow down to two fantastic teams. Like, I mean, what can you say? And then coming from me, in this matchup, I have to go with the Green Bay Packers because I think they run the table, then I think they deserve to be the champs because, I mean, Detroit, like, again, Stafford's hand. He, without the glove, with the glove, different Different, different Staffords with the glove, without the glove. So coming from me, I'm taking the Green Bay Packers to win this game on Sunday Night Football. And those are my Week 17 picks. I hope you enjoyed my picks. Comment below who do you have this week. Uh, um, represent your teams. Tell me what you think. Who do you think is going to be in the? Who who you think is going to win those uh, divisional games this week? Let's have a conversation about. It. I'm always on to like your comment. Um, and reply to it, of course, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and become part of this Dangerous Alliance, and I will see you in the next video. See ya!